Monsters are all the rage over here at Top 5 Scary Videos, especially ones that grace the silver screen with their terrifying, monstrous presence. And guess what? We're coming at you with a special Kaiju Monster Attack Edition. Or, well, that's a working title, really, so just roll with it. The thing is, whilst we've recently covered giant monsters of a different variety, there is no doubt that ever since 1953's The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms inspired global cinema with the thought of terrifying monstrosities rising from the depths of the ocean, Kaiju Cinema took that concept and ran with it. The truth is, there is nothing quite like this style of science fiction horror, so let's take a look at some of the best of the best. Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch. Today, we curious to take a look at the top five scariest giant kaiju monster movies. Roll the clip. Alright, okay, maybe not quite what you were expecting, but for the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2009's Big Man Japan, perhaps one of the strangest yet brilliant films to have recently emerged from the home of the kaiju movie. And yeah, if you're in the mood for some giant monsters but aren't quite sure what version you'd like, yeah, Big Man Japan is probably the movie for you. Believe me, it's weird but brilliant, and it's a hodgepodge of pretty much every trope that we know and love in giant monster cinema. Anyway, on with the show. Kicking off at number five. Destroy All Monsters, 1968. Alright, probably the best place to start if you're not sure what kaiju cinema is, is by ramming together pretty much every single kaiju ever and making them throw down in a titanic battle to the death. And I mean, it's probably important to note that this movie features perhaps the most kaiju in any giant monster movie ever. We're talking Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, Anguirus, Manila. It goes without saying, but they're pretty big players, and obviously, anytime Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan get together, you know that some pretty big stuff is going to go down. Directed by Ishiro Honda, one of the biggest players in the Showa era of Kaiju Cinema, and one of Toho Studios' best and brightest assets. Destroy All Monsters takes place in a time of pure utopia, where world peace has been achieved by the year 1999, and all of the giant monsters that have previously tried to destroy the planet have instead been captured and confined to an area known as Monsterland. However, just when all seems well, all of these monsters are broken out of their metaphorical giant prison and instead mind controlled by an alien species known as the Kilax, who then send the kaiju to attack major cities across the planet. We're talking Godzilla tearing apart New York City, Rodan invading Moscow, and Mothra and her larval offspring laying waste to the cities of Beijing. Thankfully, Earth's defenses, spearheaded by the United Nations Science Committee in their first appearance, eventually wrestle back control of the poor mind control kaiju. But that's when the Kilax send their biggest and baddest nasty of all time, King Ghidorah himself, and then stuff really gets blown to smithereens. The thing is, although not quite campy enough to be mid-70s kaiju brilliance, and not quite gritty enough to be mid-80s and 90s kaiju raw action, Destroy All Monsters sits somewhere between the two, and yet, most importantly, it's just pure fun. Destroy All Monsters is insane, and it's a time where Toho Studios figured, what the heck, we've got all of these monsters, we may as well put them through their paces. Although not a highlight of kaiju history in any way, it sets the precedent for many more to come. Swinging in at number four, Giant Monsters All Out Attack, 2001. And if you're looking for a real mouthful, then why don't you try Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. Yeah, because who cares about film titles anymore, right? Thankfully for us though, although colloquially dubbed GMK by Kaiju Monster Movie fans, 2001's Giant Monsters All Out Attack is perhaps one of the most accessible kaiju movies ever made. The thing is, whilst it certainly embraces the unabashed cheesiness that earlier Showa era and Heisei era kaiju movies were so famed for, this one was made during the short period known as the Millennium Era. And strangely enough, much like the zeitgeist captured in that period of cinema, GMK is surprisingly dark. For a kaiju movie, it's gritty as all hell, and although not perfect in any sense, there are moments in this movie that really turn the franchise on its head. And to address the kaiju elephant in the room, yes, Giant Monsters All Out Attack is hated by certain portions of the fan base, given the fact that King Ghidorah, the ultimate adversary of all time, is instead the good guy in this story. And that means only one thing, our beloved Godzilla 
is the villain. Written and directed by Shusuke Kaneko, GMK features Godzilla as a ravenous returning force during a time where the world and the brave and noble JSDF are nervous about where and when Godzilla will strike again. Unbeknownst to them though, Godzilla is actually possessed by the souls of the dead that were lost during the events of World War II. And then the only thing left to do is for an unlikely alliance to be forged between Mothra, King Ghidorah and Baragon. Although the themes aren't always clear in this movie, and although they miss more often than they hit, GMK is one of the most complete giant monster movies of recent times. Although the unconventional Godzilla is kind of a hated theme, start to finish, GMK is entertaining. And that's the most important thing. Next up at number three, King Kong vs. Godzilla, 1962. I'll be damned if this isn't one of the finest moments in kaiju cinema of all time, really. To be a fan of this type of cinema, you have to adhere to a certain set of disbelief. When there's a guy in a lizard suit rolling around a fake background, yeah, sometimes it doesn't always work. And whilst that is certainly the case in 1962 King Kong vs Godzilla, Holy moly, if there aren't some absolutely astounding moments of cinema to be found here. It's crazy because what's so great about this genre is that Toho Studios just didn't care. Not in the sense that they didn't put their heart and soul into these movies because that's exactly what they did. They just didn't do things by a certain playbook. Hollywood be damned as far as they were concerned because they wanted to put one guy in a lizard suit and one guy in a gorilla outfit and then make the best damn movie that they could. This is the culmination of that very spirit, King Kong vs Godzilla and whilst next year there is a remake coming our way, if you've got a spare 90 minutes, just give this movie a watch. Really, this is one of the finest examples of kaiju cinema going, and it's certainly worth your attention. Again, directed by Shiro Honda and written by Shinichi Sekizawa, the story behind King Kong vs Godzilla originally began with the giant Lord of the Apes actually throwing down with some version of a giant Frankenstein monster, which, let's not beat about the bush, would have been absolutely awesome, but thankfully for us, Toho snapped out of it and realised that the giant lizard king would be a far greater adversary. Obviously, the narrative behind this movie it's pretty self-explanatory, but the cultural impact that this movie has had on science fiction cinema is kind of staggering. There are so many urban myths and legends about this movie that it's worth experiencing that just for the fact. And whilst most of them aren't exactly true, the ending to King Kong vs Godzilla is one of the most epic conclusions of 20th century cinema. This movie is brilliant, and its historical significance should not be forgotten. Coming in at number two, Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, 1995. Finally, finally we have a place to put this movie. And yeah, whatever, this movie isn't scary in the slightest, but my word, if this movie isn't all kinds of marvellous, then I don't know what is. The thing is, we get it. We love Godzilla, we love King Kong, they're the greatest, but until this movie, Gamera was one of the most overlooked kaiju monsters of all time. Put it this way, Guardian of the Universe was both a reboot of the franchise and also the ninth movie featuring the turtle shelled monster hero. Gamera is persistent and the payoff, surprisingly, was one of the greatest kaiju movies of all time. Gamera is a kaiju like no other. He's a massive, fire-breathing, prehistoric turtle, and much like his Godzilla brethren, he was mutated via exposure to nuclear weapons. At the start of the Kaiju franchise, Gamera was an all-consuming, aggressive force, but slowly, as the franchise evolved, Gamera took a backseat to his other more famous Koju co-stars, and eventually was forced into a niche, to say the least. You see, eventually Gamera took on a less malevolent force, and instead, he became a defender of humanity, particularly human children, and a guardian of our planet against extraterrestrial alien forces. All of this finally culminated in his reinvention of a reinvention in 1995's Gamera Guardian of the Universe, and this movie is astounding because of it. Written by Kazunori Ito and directed by Shusuke Kaneko, again, Gamera Guardian of the Universe embodies that same spirit that Toho Studios have perfected over the decades. This movie is just freaking fun. It's so fantastically bizarre that you can't help but be entertained. Gyos flying through the skies, attacking people left, right, and center, and the giant fire breathing turtle, who is a friend to all human children, saving the day. In many ways, this entry embodies everything that we love about kaiju cinema. And as a side note, the following Gamera centric movies are also worth a watch. Again, if you're looking for some 90 minutes of entertainment, you really cannot go wrong with Gamera. And finally, coming in at the spot, Gajira, 1954. A 
It just has to be, doesn't it? And whilst over here at Top 5 Scary Videos, we do indeed favour doing things a little differently when it comes to picking out particular movie entries. We don't need that here. You see, kaiju monster movies already speak for themselves in that regard, or well, raw for themselves, I guess. And 1954's Gojira, the most important giant monster movie that has ever emerged from Japan, exemplifies that fact entirely. This is the definitive Godzilla movie, and still to this day, over 60 years later, 1954's Gojira is unrivaled. It is astounding how well this movie has held up. And much like some of the suit work seen in King Kong vs. Godzilla, some of the scenes that were captured in this movie were hallmark moments in science fiction cinema. Following its release, Ashiro Honda, the man behind 1954's Gojira and one of Toho Studios' most legendary kaiju contributions, said, If Godzilla had been a dinosaur or some other animal, he would have been killed with just one cannonball. But if he were equal to an atomic bomb, we would know what to do. So I took the characteristics of an atomic bomb and then applied them to Godzilla. You see, this is exactly why kaiju monster movies captured something so special. They exemplified an era, a period of Japanese history that was still trying to recover from the horrors of the Second World War. In fact, the destruction seen throughout this black and white B-movie, metaphorically speaking, still can rival some of the most expensive and well-produced giant monster movies ever made. 1954's Gojira is a masterclass in how to make a giant monster truly terrifying. Low angles, ample pacing on the reveal, high angled shots of the ant-like human survivors fleeing in terror. Gojira is sci-fi horror 101. Whilst this genre isn't exactly for everyone, the influence it has had on the horror genre is undeniable. This movie cemented Godzilla as the definitive, unrivaled giant monster, and since its release way back when in 1954, few films have come close to toppling it. Well, there we have it, folks. Our list for the top five scariest giant kaiju monster movies. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list, and let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Vicarious Gamer says, after getting my girlfriend to watch The Greasy Strangler with me, she refuses to watch movies with me. Yeah. What can I say, dude? Don't say I didn't warn you. It is one of the strangest movies ever made for a reason. I hope you enjoyed it, though. And finally, Matthew Adams says, Ugh, dude, put a sock in it and just play some clips with the movie titles edited in. Well, I'm afraid to break it to you, Matthew Adams, but I think you'd perhaps find more entertainment in watching some uh, movie trailers. They're great fun. Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's what we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a deer and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.